What's happening, everybody? It's Pi Guy here today. Um, apologize for the delay in putting out some new content. Uh, I've been busy with a few projects, uh, making a miniature bar top arcade, um, or not miniature, just a bar top arcade cabinet. Uh, also been working on building up my 64 gigabyte image. Had a few things I didn't like on there, but. Honestly, I haven't been totally happy with the quality of my video and audio, um, so I have ordered a HDMI recording box, which will basically run everything on a screen directly through the recorder, uh, which should increase things a lot, um, the quality of things a lot. So, it was taking a little too long to get here, so I wanted to put something out for everybody, and um, today I wanted to go over something I get asked pretty often, which is um, how to change the size of the uh, the display when you're playing a game. Um, if you notice, especially with some of the older systems, like Nintendo, for example, I'll go over to Nintendo right now, um, those you get really thick black bars on the left and right sides of the game, whatever game it is you may be playing. Um, let me jump into something here. Original Metal Gear. The game that nobody knew existed. Um, so, if you happen to this game, you can see right away, uh, well, maybe not quite right away, there you go. You have two black bars there on the side of the actual gameplay screen. Let me actually start this thing so you can see, and that one's pretty clear. I even had the camera zoomed out this time a little to show the frames of my television, which hopefully are coming through a little bit darker than everything else on the very edge of the camera shot. But you can clearly see... It's, it's not a use a full usage of the screen here. I have a 46-inch television, and Nintendo was not made for televisions that big back in the day. If you remember going over your buddy's house that they had, you know, a 27 or 30-inch TV that was considered big screen, and by today's standards, that's pretty small. So um, I'm going to jump back out of this game. There are a few things you can do to change that. There's actually two ways to change it. One of them... And each of them comes with their pros and cons, but one of them is to just jump into the launching option. So as soon as you launch the game, just press A, and it'll take you to this screen. I have uh, loading images set up, and I cut down my timer for that, so I, I had to press it very quickly. So that's, that's why you may not have seen the uh, prompt for it. But once you press it, it'll come to the screen, and there are quite a few cool things you can do in here. The first one is uh, select the default emulator for your system. I only have one emulator for Nintendo, so that's fine. Um, you could also change it for the particular ROM within the system as opposed to doing it in a blanket manner. And likewise, you have your video mode. And again, you could set this for all the games in the emulator, which is right here. It says number four, even though it's the third option down. I don't exactly know why they do that. Um, I guess that does match up with your keyboard commands as well, so there's that. But... Yeah, you can select default video mode just for the emulator. You can also set it for the emulator plus the ROM, which means this specific game. So no other games will be Im impacted by whatever you change here. So I'm going to jump into that. And you can see towards the center of each line, it has the ratio format. 4-3, 4-3, 16-9, 16 And all the way to the right is progressive or interlaced. Progressive is better, so you guys know... In case you're not familiar, 1080p is better than 1080 interlaced. Again, older games may not matter so much, though. So on the left, you have the actual resolution of that format. Uh, so I'm going to go with the lower resolution one, and I'm going to select 16.9 uh, just for selecting it. So you can see that the difference in screen size. So I want to jump down here. I could go exit without launching, but I actually want to launch this game, so I'm just going to select that. And you can see already the screen size is bigger all around. And the pros of doing it this way are that that's going to save. When, whenever you change anything in the launching menu, it'll actually save into the config file for the Raspberry Pi. So you won't have to do that every time. It'll just remember what you did and you're set. So that's a nice touch. Uh, the other upside is I feel like this is formatted a little better. I'm trying to start this actual game here. Um, every, it doesn't look very stretched. It just looks like it's naturally larger, but there's still pretty big gaps along the perimeters of the screen. So that's definitely the drawback to it. But again, it looks, it looks natural. And 
what I mean by that, you'll see the difference in, in the next thing I'm going to do. So I want to jump out of this game. And I'm just going to keep it consistent and keep using the same game so it's easier to compare. I'm going to remove what I just did. So remove video mode, choice for the emulator plus the ROM. I removed this. So now it's back to the default, which is 4.3, uh, I believe this core does. Might even be a little different. I don't even know. So let's launch this game again. So you can see it's it's back. It's not quite as long as the other one. All right, but we can do this. You can press select and the X button, and that's going to launch your RetroArch menu. So once you're in here, you just scroll down to settings, go to video, and you want to go to aspect ratio, and then you can just press left or right on your stick or your or your D-pad rather, and it'll just change right there. So that's that's definitely a, a pro to doing it this way. You get to see right there the difference. Changes right before your eyes. No loading and saving and all that mumbo jumbo it just happens right there. Core provided is always your default. But let's stretch it out. This is the RetroArch 16.9, which looks different than the the uh, one that we did through the launcher. But if you notice, it's only stretching it wide. It doesn't shrink it down top and bottom, which is why this one looks more stretched than the other one. Um, you could do 16.10 too. I like to do that for my PlayStation games personally. But we'll leave it at 16.9 just to compare apples to apples. You can really see the difference here. Um, go to resume. So this is taking up my whole screen now. There's really there's really nothing. It goes right to the frames, all, all the borders of the, of the actual um, screen frame. So difference is this looks a little more pixelated. Um, it doesn't look quite as normal. It looks a little funny to me. But it is using... The full capacity of your television screen. The other downside to this is that um, you have to do that every time you launch the game. It's not going to save that. So, but it's really just going to come down to user choice, whatever you whatever you prefer to do. If you don't want to be bothered doing it every time, then you know do the launching. It's not going to be quite uh, quite the full screen like this is, but it looks a little more natural. So I definitely appreciate that myself. I've never really played this game before, believe it or not. But, um, you know, this way it's it's using the full capacity of your television. So, I mean, that's really just a solution to a minor nuisance, I guess. But I just wanted to share that with you guys. I wanted to keep this video short. I do have a lot of stuff lined up in the near future. I am kind of trying to stall for this box to get here, which hopefully will be coming this week. And then the quality of the videos will go up and a little bit easier to enjoy for everybody. But if you like this video, appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. Uh, also consider subscribing and questions or comments below. Always appreciate it. Let me know if you guys have any content you want me to go over. I'm always uh, up for ideas on future videos. Thanks for watching, guys.